It only modulates just this much, only to this extent, but when it rotates, it blurs the surroundings. Hello, this is Error. There are reports that the EUV equipment made directly in China will begin trial production this fall, starting from the third quarter of 2025. This information has been widely circulated. As a result, there were brief introductions about the differences between the EUV equipment being developed independently in China and ASML's technology. Ultimately, due to continuous regulations from the United States, companies like SMIC and Huawei have started designing their own chips and using DUV equipment for manufacturing as foundries. Traditional DUV equipment can handle manufacturing processes up to around 7 nanometers. However, for the more cutting-edge processes like 5 nanometers, 4 nanometers, and 3 nanometers, EUV equipment becomes essential. This advanced technology relies on ultraviolet light exposure systems to achieve the higher precision necessary for the latest semiconductor designs. For those who might be new to the concept of photolithography equipment, let me explain briefly. Additionally, it's important to note that ASML and Huawei have different approaches to this technology. So what should we consider in this context? How likely is it for the Chinese approach to succeed? And is it possible for them to develop this technology independently? We can estimate the likelihood of China being able to develop this technology on their own. EUV photolithography machines are composed of numerous intricate parts, so it's important to grasp the underlying principle. One of the most highlighted aspects when discussing ASML's UV equipment is the section where ultraviolet light, depicted in purple, is utilized. What we're talking about here is how light is precisely focused to expose the wafer. By shining the light onto the wafer, specific patterns are created, which are essential for semiconductor manufacturing. To grasp why this process is necessary, we need to understand that the goal of semiconductor lithography is to generate detailed patterns for metal connections. Our goal is to create intricate patterns that can control the flow of electricity, either allowing it to pass, stopping it, or storing it temporarily to form circuits. Back in school, we might have used breadboards for such tasks, and engineering students or graduates might have manually wired circuits. However, this modern method is significantly more sophisticated. As we make them more finely, this semiconductor process emerged. How does it work? As you can see now, here, you can see a wafer. And on top of that, we spread a special liquid called photoresist. You don't need to remember this technical term. After applying this liquid, we place a mask over it. This entire process is known as lithography. So what is lithography exactly? It's kind of like using a stencil, where the mask helps imprint the desired pattern. When we have a specific shape in mind, lithography enables us to precisely transfer that shape onto the surface. In the same way, we create the desired circuit pattern on the mask, and if it is very finely detailed, we then expose it to light. But why do we use light for this process? When light passes through this uniquely applied layer, known in the industry as photoresist or PR, it causes the exposed areas to undergo significant changes in their properties. This results in them behaving differently compared to the areas that remain unexposed to the light. This variation in behavior is essential as it leads to distinct differences in their chemical properties. The areas exposed to light are etched away, while the unexposed areas remain. This differentiation allows us to create distinct pattern. Whether it is a positive or negative photoresist, the principle is the same. The properties of the areas exposed to light change, letting us selectively etch certain parts. This is the fundamental goal. Remember, we learned about this in the past. We have learned extensively about this topic, haven't we? When a wave encounters a slit that is narrower than the wavelength itself, it undergoes diffraction, which causes the wave to spread out. Do you understand the concept I am explaining? You know the mask we made, right? The fine details of the mask we want to create. When the light level falls below a certain threshold, it passes through and reaches the photoresist which then causes diffraction. This diffraction prevents the photoresist material from transforming properly as intended. Instead of a clean transformation, the material spreads out due to the diffraction affecting the surrounding area as well. When the pattern size on the photoresist mask is comparable to the wavelength of light, diffraction effects become very prominent. Therefore, it is crucial to shorten the wavelength of the light as much as possible. The key idea behind EUV technology is to achieve a shorter wavelength than DUV, which is essential for enhancing precision in semiconductor manufacturing. So, how exactly do we create this shorter wavelength? Well, we use a very unique method. To achieve the specific wavelength we need, we utilize what is known as an SN droplet, which is essentially tin. The tin droplets fall at precise intervals, drop by drop, and we have developed a system that ensures these droplets fall continuously at these regular intervals. Now, these droplets need to keep falling at the exact same spot at regular intervals, and this is achieved by generating laser pulses that hit them precisely. They use a CO2 laser with extremely high energy to strike the falling tin droplets, and as this high energy is transferred to the tin droplet, they momentarily transform into
into a plasma state. At that exact moment, it converts into what we call extreme ultraviolet light, or EUV, characterized by the release of a large number of photons due to its very short wavelength, making it a distinct type of light. These photons are then collected at a perpendicular angle to efficiently focus the light, enabling precise control in the lithography process. Using highly precise optical components, the EUV light is repeatedly focused and diffused every time it strikes the target. This diffused light then projects intricate patterns onto the wafer, passing through the mask to ensure precision and accuracy in creating the desired patterns. This method, where a CO2 laser repeatedly hits tin, is known as the LPP method, or laser-produced plasma, which involves the laser striking multiple times to create plasma. This method is described as generating plasma by striking precise locations with repeated hammer-like blows, similar to hammering nails at exact spots. Due to the very high power of the laser, its efficiency might be somewhat lower. However, it has already been commercialized and numerous companies are currently utilizing this technology. However, foundry manufacturers and well-known wafer producers like TSMC, Samsung and Intel are all using it, aren't they? The technology has matured significantly with this method, but it's also incredibly expensive, costing tens of millions of dollars and the systems are extremely complex. On the other hand, China has already developed its own EUV technology. It's impressive, isn't it? Since the US imposed sanctions, China had to develop its own technology. Now, when I say China is impressive, some people ask if I'm Chinese or North Korean, but I'm actually South Korean. I'm not giving a biased opinion, so please don't misunderstand. Anyway, regarding this EUV technology, how did Huawei approach it? They use a method called LDP, or laser-driven plasma, instead of the LPP method. Earlier, we mentioned that the LPP, or laser-produced plasma, involves hitting tin with a CO2 laser, didn't we? But it generates plasma less intensely. How does it do that? First, it uses a slightly weaker laser than a carbon dioxide laser. They use lasers with lower energy levels that are more energy efficient and capable of continuously pulsing in a sustained manner, which can be advantageous for both miniaturization and cost reduction. By employing these weaker lasers, they can achieve these benefits, but how exactly they hit the target material, whether it is tin or some other metal, remains to be seen. I don't know the exact details, but just like how ASML uses a CO2 laser to hit tin in the LPP method, this technique involves using a laser with slightly lower power to repeatedly strike the target material. It's similar to weight training. Instead of lifting a heavy 100 kilogram weight for a single rep, you might use a lighter weight for multiple repetitions. In the same way, sometimes it's more effective to lift a lighter weight repeatedly rather than a heavier one just once. Similarly, by continuously striking the target material with a lower powered laser at high frequency, the plasma state is maintained steadily. Even if large amounts aren't generated at once, it consistently produces small amounts of plasma over time. The goal of the LDP method is to ensure a continuous and stable generation of plasma, even if it produces less plasma overall. This approach allows for a more consistent concentration of photons each time plasma is generated. In contrast to the traditional LPP method, which gathers and releases photons in bursts, the LDP method strives for a steady and uniform plasma production. However, even though we must wait and see if China can truly produce something as advanced as ASML's EUV equipment, it is undeniably an extremely difficult challenge. So it's crucial that they aim for pilot production this fall. In this process, it's not just one or two components that are involved. In fact, there are a variety of elements that come into play, such as the lenses, the heating mechanism for the wafer, the new lasers used for immersion control, and the sensors that ensure precise alignment. Despite the complexity, China has already managed to localize some of these components, which makes it somewhat feasible to proceed. To maintain these conditions, they likely need equipment that requires an ultra-high vacuum environment, and China already possesses such equipment. China currently possesses all the semiconductor equipment as well. When it comes to LCDS, China has taken over the market entirely, and they are now making a strong push to dominate OLED technology as well. This indicates that China has made significant progress in handling components that require highly precise nanometer-level processes, such as high vacuum chambers and precision stage equipment. Additionally, they have advanced in other areas like camera lenses. If China finds itself in a situation where it must internalize components like optical parts, there are some components that they can replace with their own versions to a certain extent. However, there is still the question of whether they can produce components with the same level of precision as the ones I mentioned earlier. Developing a system capable of consistently and accurately releasing droplets at the precise moment requires significant technological expertise. This is particularly pertinent to the LPP method, although they may employ a lower powered laser in their own technique, which would involve targets that are essentially clustered together. When considering how to build equipment that can effectively collect and focus their photons without relying on the technologies of component manufacturers from other countries, particularly those from Japan or Germany, it becomes quite evident that there are significant questions and doubts about whether they can internalize all these technologies by themselves. There are inherent limitations in the equipment used to produce these components, which is why they are considering the LDP method. This method is quite complex, but instead of replicating the highly advanced technique developed over decades, they are opting for a somewhat easier approach, even if it results in a slightly lower yield. Particularly with CO2 lasers, the leading manufacturers are based in
in the US Trotec, for instance, is a renowned European company headquartered in Austria, and these firms belong to the Western Bloc. There's also a notable German company called Trump, which is highly esteemed in the laser sector. They produce a substantial amount of equipment, but there might be some limitations to consider. While China does manufacture CO2 laser equipment, it's not just limited to that. When it comes to assembling their EUV systems, they have the flexibility to use different configurations, and they might have concluded that the LDP method is more advantageous. I do not have the information now. I will mention it in a follow-up video or later.